Welcome back everyone. Our recipe book is looking better, but it still looks very plain. So in this video, we're going to look at formatting and in particular, we're gonna look at our theme and our alternating colors. By the time we are done, we will have a much better looking recipe book than what it looks like right now. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in our recipe book that we have been building. Let's start at the top and click on format. In this menu, you will see that we have several options, and the first option is theme. Now, if we look towards the bottom, we will see another option for alternating colors. We will cover both of those in this video. We're gonna start with setting up our theme, so let's click on theme. This menu opens up on the right, and we can see a set of themes that are already built in. Click on these themes, and then you can click customize to reveal the different color palettes that are included in these themes. By default, any Google Sheet that you create will be set to the standard theme. Start by picking a theme that is close to what you already like and what appeals to you. It is something that you can build up from, so it's just to get an idea and maybe spark some inspiration. I'm gonna click on the Streamline theme and I'm gonna click Customize. From here, I can select what font I want to be standard throughout my Google Sheet and then I can select what I would like for my text to be. So what color I want that to be. Now notice that the next set of colors come into play when we have charts and graphs, which we don't really have any of those yet, but these are the colors that would be in those charts and graphs once we actually add those later. I can customize these colors to my liking. Personally, I like to use a free color palette generator that I get from the internet and it helps me come up with a set of colors. And then I'm gonna show you where you're gonna take those hex codes from those generators and put those into here. All right, so what I really like to change is the color of the hyperlinks, which we're gonna to get to in a coming module. But we're gonna change that color now. So you can click on the color and select from the list what we have like this or click here to customize the color. If you know the hex code, like I said, from some sort of color palette generator that you're that you're using, you can copy and paste that here into this little box. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this color for my hyperlinks, because I like this color. Take some time to get your colors set up the way that you would like them, and when you're done, you can click done when you're finished, and you're gonna wanna click this little X in the top right corner to get this menu out of your view so that you can see more of your spreadsheet. All right, we're back in our recipe book. We're going to go through the same process as we did with the theme. So click on the format menu at the top and select alternating colors from that drop down menu. This window opens on the right and it tries to be really smart and help you by going ahead and giving you alternating colors in gray for the area that it thinks that you need. Depending on where your mouse was before you actually clicked on the format menu and then alternating colors, it may have actually just colored a single cell. So the first thing we need to do is look up at the very top where it says apply to range. Click on the little four square icon, which represents our range, which is on our sheet. So it's just an area and another pop-up appears. You can delete out whatever is in that space, and now that it is empty, you can actually click on the square in the top left corner, and that selects our entire sheet. It is in between the A and the 1. So one click, and it highlights our entire sheet. Isn't that such a cool trick? So for this recipe book, we want to apply these alternating colors to the entire sheet. But you could have also just selected a very specific area or range, kind of like this. Notice that I started with that data range empty. I deleted it out. And as I highlight the cells, it is writing the range for me. So if you have the correct thing and you're ready to go, you can click OK. There are some default styles, so go ahead and play around with these. You may like one of these already, so pick one of these styles that is close to something you are looking for, and of course we can, we can customize them. So now down in the middle section, you can personalize this to the header color and then the alternating colors that you prefer to use. So for example, you may like this header color, but you may find that the alternating colors are a little bit too dark or too bright for your liking. So for example, I'm going to change color two and lighten it up just a little bit. 
we can click on this color drop down menu. Now that we see at the top are the theme colors and then we see our customized section followed by a section of standard colors. I want you to play around and pick what you would like. I'm going to customize this color and lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to click on the plus button in the customize section and I'm going to drag the color towards the white to lighten it up. You're going to click OK to save your changes. And you can also change the header. You can change it to whatever you like. I'm going to pick a color from my theme. Remember, that's why it's great to have a theme because now I have those colors right here. When you're satisfied, click done. If you don't like using the alternating colors feature, that's perfectly fine. Some people don't like to use that. You can click remove at the bottom. So you saw the theme colors when we were changing out these colors. It's a great example of why you want to set up a theme before you start formatting your Google Sheet. Honestly, sometimes I start with alternating colors first because they do seem so dominating. And then I work backwards to pick theme colors to match what I did here with alternating colors. So sometimes I end up coming back and changing these alternating colors once I do have a theme picked out. It just really all depends. You can start with one or the other first. As long as you get a theme settled before moving forward with all of your other formatting. So test it out, find out what works best for you and your workflow. All right, guys, we made it. Our recipe book isn't looking as boring as it was when we started, but there are still a few formatting issues that we have left to handle. So we're going to dive deep into the toolbar and format all of this data in the next module so it will finally not look like such a mess. So come on and meet me over there in the next module. This video is part of our complete course on Google Sheets. To watch the complete course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to watch additional videos, click over there.